Hey everybody, so as you know, we are working on the scripts for the next few country episodes, which means this is gonna have to be a filler week. Heavily, heavily, heavily requested. This one is gonna be on the states or Bundesländer of Germany. Germany is a powerhouse nation. Obviously, it is the largest economy in Europe, and it holds a significant role of geopolitical activity that links an entire continent. As you'll soon find out, each state in Germany is pretty unique and diverse in their own way. They each kind of have their own specialty, and some have unique dialects. Before we get into this, though, I just wanna let you know that one of my favorite sponsors is working with us once again, Satera. For those of you that don't know, Satera is a geography game website. Yeah, pretty appropriate for this channel, don't you think? You can download it on iOS or Android, or you can just go to the website here and play it online. You can choose your own region, you can test yourself on things like physical landscapes, capitals, you can even custom create your own game, and get this, they actually made a Geography Now game that you can play. It covers the countries we've done so far on this channel. Yeah, they made one. And not only that, but speaking of Germany, it comes in over 30 different languages, including German. I totally recommend you check them out. I've played this game. It's great. It's worth it. Thank you, Satera, for sponsoring Geography Now. All right, and so with that being said, let's just jump into the 16 Bundesländer of Germany. First one, Baden-Württemberg, capital Stuttgart. This is like the other southern state besides Bavaria. It was formed by the joining of three other former states, these. It's kind of like the luxury car state. You know, they have the headquarters of Mercedes-Benz and Porsche, lots of manufacturing manufacturing going down here. It's very busy. They're also known for having the Black Forest where all those fairy tales were inspired off of by the Brothers Grimm, which also plays into the unique Swabian culture that they're known for down here. Swabians have possibly the weirdest dialect in all of Germany. A lot of Germans can't even understand them and it incorporates a lot of weird unique festivals. A lot of times they wear these costumes based off of the fairy tales that came from here. Switzerland is like their best friend. They really just kind of get each other. A lot of Swiss people come over and travel to this area of Germany. And they're known for being really smart with their money and handling it very well, which also kind of means a lot of people think they're kind of stingy. That's like the stereotype. Geography Jessica says, it is a sacrilege to throw stuff out, even if it's a broken TV or something. Bavaria or Bayern, capital Munich. This is the largest state in size and the second largest in terms of population. It's kind of like the home of all those, you know, perpetuated German stereotypes that became famous through American culture. You know, Lederhosen, Dirndls, those big one liter jugs of beer, half timber houses, you know, stuff like that. Reason being because after World War II, this place was occupied by the Americans and whatever they saw, they just kind of put in media. They're kind of like the most independent out of all the German states. I mean, they even had their own king at one point. He went crazy and drowned himself. They have more of like a Catholic background and Austria is kind of like their conjoined twin. Like they get, they get along really well with Austria. Beautiful mountains here. In fact, the tallest mountain in all of Germany, Zugspitze, is found here as well. And no shocker, they are really, really, really really known for beer. There's like over 4,000 breweries here. The oldest one in all of Germany is also found here. And you know, all Germans kind of have their own opinions on Bavaria. Otto von Bismarck even once said, the Bavarian is the link between human and Austrian. Berlin, also the capital of Germany, is not only the largest city in Germany, but it's also one of the three city-states, as in cities that are considered states. Now, when I asked a lot of you German geography peeps to describe Berlin, a lot of you, even from Berlin, kind of said something along the lines of, uh, why do we even have this city? In 2003, former mayor Klaus Wolverite described Berlin as poor but sexy. It's pretty much the only capital city in all of Europe that costs more than it earns. As in, the entire country's GDP could be higher if Berlin didn't exist. And it's like you either love it or hate it. Geography Mara says it's like the city where Germans go to find themselves. Starving artists, aspiring EDM and techno musicians trying to make a point while unemployed. No, but seriously, the city does have some cool sites, colorful art scene. What's weird though is you can still kind of see the distinction between East and West Berlin because it was split after the war. And it's kind of like a weird place where capitalism and communism coalesce in one location. I mean, I guess Berlin is kind of like the rebel punk rock teenager who locks himself in his room because his parents just don't understand him. Brandenburg, capital Potsdam. Geography Jakob says, people joke that this state is the dead zone that surrounds Berlin. Berlin has more people than the entire state of Brandenburg. This is the first of the five states that make the former East Germany before the unification. It's kind of known as like the slow to get things done state, as in their airport was always supposed to be done this year, but they always say that like every year and it's been like 10 years. Uh, let's see, lots of former Prussian history here. Lots of cool stuff to see here though, like the Roman baths or the Cottbus castle, the Anderhavel city museum. They actually have like these cool medieval walls from the 14th century. 
One of the most notable sites being the Palace of Sanssouci. Lots of Eastern Europeans live here, especially Polish. I mean, they are on the border with Poland. They're kind of like the sidekick of Berlin that like tags along and wants to join his punk rock band, I guess you could say. Bremen. This is actually another city-state, however, it's more of like two. It's broken up into Bremen and Bremerhaven. This is the smallest and least populated state in all of Germany at only about 660,000 people. Back in the day, it was labeled as a free Hanseatic city back when the Hanseatic League was a thing. That's a whole other thing we could talk about. Lots of marine culture here. Actually, people who want to become sailors come to Bremen and Bremerhaven. Beck's beer comes from here as well as chocolate beer, both of which many Germans hate. Let's see what else do they have. They have the Bremer Stadt music content statue. They have the only microgravity tower in Europe where you can experience nine seconds of weightlessness, eight mummified bodies in glass coffins, and a memorial block in the street dedicated to a female serial killer. Charming. But yeah, you know, Bremen is just kind of like this unique, quaint, yet always kind of competing with Hamburg state. Which brings us to... Hamburg. Hamburg is the last of the three city-states, and it is pretty much the richest state in all of Germany. <laughs> you gotta love these guys, because people from Hamburg are called Hamburgers. Sometimes they're called the Venice of the North Sea, because they have all these neighborhoods that are separated by canals and bridges. Like Bremen and Bremerhaven, they have a harbor built on the Elbe River, which gives them access to the sea, and they have a huge maritime culture, even though they are technically not on the sea. And they are getting quite a bit of attention these days, because Hamburg is kind of like the IT capital of Germany right now. A lot of you have also mentioned that they have the most famous red light district in all of Germany, the adult-themed Reeperbahn. I did not know that. Lots of cool sites you can see here, though. Oh, and they love fish here. Kind of like the uh, techie rich guy who loves his fish. Next up, Hesse, or Hessen, capital Wiesbaden. Much of today's Hesse state belonged to the former Hessen duchy back in the day. It was an independent state all the way up until 1871, and they are most famous for Frankfurt. It has more skyscrapers than any other city, and and it has the busiest airport in all of Germany as well. And it is kind of like the business hub of Germany. It's home to so many corporate banks and financial institutions, also home to the German Stock Exchange. And Goethe, one of the most important writers in German history, is from Frankfurt. And well, they love apples, especially drinking it in various ways. They love apple cider. There's even a fountain that shoots apple wine at you. But yeah, Hess, Hessen is kind of like a, it's like the financial management brother of the family. Lower Saxony, capital Hanover. It's the second largest state in terms of area and it's called Lower Saxony because of the elevation, not because of the geographic location on the map. Get Keep that in mind. This state gets along very well with the Netherlands. This state kind of has like two cultures, the Plain Saxons and the Frisians, whom are related to the Frisians in the Netherlands. It's kind of like the country farmland area of Germany. They host a lot of fairs like the World Fair Expo in 2000. However, interestingly enough, you can also hear quite a bit of Plattdeutsch spoken here as well, which is the dialect that the Amish speak in the Americas. It's also the headquarters of Volkswagen. And they also have Volksburg, which is the city with the highest GDP per capita in the entire country. It's like the richest city. mecklenburg vorpommern capital Schwerin. This is actually the poorest state in Germany, and it is the second former East Germany state. As the name implies, Vorpommern, it was part of the former area known as Pomerania, which, yes, that's where the Pomeranian dog comes from. Some people joke that it should be called mecklenburg vorpommern because it has a lot of Polish influence. It's right next to Poland. They even share and split this island with them called Usedom. It is very rural and sparsely populated. It has a lot of farmers and old people. In fact, it is disputably the oldest state in all of Germany. Tons of lakes here though. The largest lake completely within Germany is actually found here as well. They also have the largest island in all of Germany. Beautiful beaches, uh, cool places with like chalk cliffs. But yeah, mecklenburg vorpommern It's kind of like uh, the old angry grandpa that yells at the kids for running on his lawn. North Rhineland, Westphalia. Capital, Dusseldorf. This is like the big daddy of Germany. It's the most populated with about 17 million. It's the powerhouse industrial capital of Germany. Much of its economy was built off of coal mining in the beginning, and today they have more companies and factories than anywhere else in Germany. People here have a deep-rooted Catholic culture. They love celebrating Carnival. The two biggest cities, Dusseldorf and Cologne, are always like competing with each other. There's really cool Frank Gehry architecture in Dusseldorf. Cologne has the Cologne Cathedral, obviously, and Cologne is kind of like the media capital of Germany. Much of the major studios can be found here. But yeah, overall, the, this state is kind of like the partying dad of Germany. Rhineland Palatinate, capital Mainz. This is kind of like the younger brother of Rhineland Westphalia, except they love wine. Like it's often argued that the best German wine can be found in this state. There's a lot of historical sites and castles, especially ones that date back to the days when France was always like invading and taking over. They also have the last bastion of 
Roman presence north of the Alps in the town of Trier. It's also the uh, birthplace of Karl Marx. They are known for liverwurst. It's kind of like the loyal sidekick of Rhineland Westphalia. Saarland, capital Saarbrücken. Besides the city states, it is the smallest state in area. Basically, the people here are like Frenchy Germans. The area was occupied by France after World War II, and they were actually their own independent state all the way up until 1957 when they decided to go back to Germany, which explains why the people here are really good at speaking French. Jacobi Fiona says they are like the long lost uncle that you don't know how you're related to and speaks French. The most notable site though probably being the Focklingen Ironworks. It's a massive rusting steel plant that is now a UNESCO heritage site. Today it holds a museum, science center, and an auditorium for concerts. I wouldn't be surprised if heavy metal concerts were a big thing here. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Saxony, capital, Dresden. This is the third former East European state. Jacobi Thorsten explains it pretty well when he says, the Saxons are one of the oldest German tribes with having a lot of political influence in the early times of the Holy Roman Empire, and with some of them even creating something of what we now know today as England, hence why many British people say that they're Anglo-Saxon, and why the English language is classified as a Germanic language. It kind of started here. Interesting, right? This place is kind of known for having two things, great universities and very right-wing politics. They get along really well with Czechia slash the Czech Republic, whatever you like calling it. They have a minority group called the Sorbians, a Slavic people group, kind of related to the Czechs, and it's actually a language that is protected by the German government. Nonetheless, though, I've been told that the people here are really super nice. They have like that East German hospitality. It's just, you know, they're different from the rest of Germany, especially Lower Saxony. Like the two Saxonies have nothing to do with each other. Saxony and Halt. Capital Magdeburg. This is the fourth former East German state. It's often said that they call themselves the state that wakes up earlier. This is basically kind of like Saxony's chiller little sister. It's also the birthplace of Martin Luther, who started the Protestant Reformation. Baroque composer Handel was born here. Uh, it is home to the Bauhaus movement, and they love Christmas here. They have a huge Christmas market and produce a lot of nutcrackers. When I was told, they are home to the mountain of Brocken, which on April 30th becomes the site of the Walpurgisnacht, a night of dancing with witches based off of the story by Goethe. Schleswig-Holstein, capital Kiel, named after the two duchies that worked together for centuries. It is the only bi-coastal state in Germany with coasts along the North Sea and the Baltic. And it's basically like the Denmark of Germany. There's a lot of Danish people here, Danish-speaking people here, and it's actually a protected, recognized language. Uh, you can greet people here by saying moin moin. And the cool thing is, on the North Sea coastline on the west side, they have the largest cohesive tidal flats in the world. A natural world heritage site, twice a day the tide recedes, exposing a massive mud flat. Of course, no surprise, fishing and sailing are huge out here. They actually have a huge sailing competition every year. Yeah, the people here are kind of known for being like tall, animal herding people that are really quiet, like they don't talk much. And finally, Thuringia or Thuringen, capital Erfurt, the last and final state of former East Germany. This place is probably most famous for the city of Weimar. As Jakob Thorsten says, it is the home of Johann Wolfgang Goethe and Friedrich von Schiller. Their works in the so-called Sturm und Drang era was so influential that it was manifested in a saying about Germany. Germany is the country of poets and thinkers. They were kind of like the Shakespeare's of Germany back in the day. Much of their writing actually influenced a lot of words and phrases for modern German that is spoken today. The composer Bach was born here. You can see his house. And interesting, they have a lot of caves here as well, like these. And uh, they're known for having really good food here as well. They have like these potato dumpling things. And all Germans love Thuringian style bratwurst. It's a, uh, it's, it's, they're famous for it. So there you go. Those are the 16 states of Germany. However, a lot of you guys also mentioned two other things. The Spanish Balearic Island, Mallorca. A lot of Germans jokingly call this the 17th Bundesländer. This is a hot spot for Germans and they flock to this place all year round. Tons of Germans already live here. A lot of the street signs and shop signs and billboards are written in German. People have lived on this island never learning a word of Spanish and they've been fine. Uh, yeah, the Germans love this island. Uh, back in Cold War times, Cuba kind of like said, oh, we're gonna give you this island, Cayos Blanco del Sur, named Ernst Talmend Island. But then like Cuba was like, oh, it was just like a symbolic thing. We didn't actually give it to you. And then Germany was like, eh, yeah, fine, whatever, keep that island. So that is it. So yeah, I mean, in conclusion, 
for Germany, you gotta hand it to them. They've gone through so much in the past century and it's almost miraculous how much they've moved forward. Whether you're Bavarian or Mecklenburg-Vorpommern, hope you like this video. Thank you. Danke schön. Stay cool. Stay tuned.